Okay, welcome back physiology students. Uh, for the next part of your blood lab, we're gonna be determining the blood type. Now the blood type helps us determine uh, what types of transfusions we can do between donor and recipient. And it's based on the antigens that are present on the red blood cells, as well as the antibodies that are present within the blood plasma. So you can read about what antigens and antibodies mean in your textbook, but today we're gonna to go through and do a synthetic uh, blood typing experiment. Now because this is not real blood, we don't have to wear PPE or gloves or anything like that. So what you're gonna to need today is you're gonna need these four different blood samples, and again, these are synthetic blood. You'll also need the three antisera, and these are essentially like antibodies. So we have an anti-A uh, and an anti-B, so there's anti-A, anti-B, and something called anti-D, and that is an anti-RH. So remember the blood types that are most common are a, A, B, O, and then we have RH positive or negative. So using these antisera will help us to determine the blood types of our mystery blood over here. So what we're gonna do first is go ahead and label the wells uh, of our blood typing plate. And what you can see here is we already have those wells labeled. So we have uh, sample for sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. These will be our mystery blood samples, and hopefully we'll be able to tell uh, what the blood types are uh, using this sort of experiment. Now, we're gonna have three drops of each of those samples, and to the first drop, we're gonna add anti-A, antiserum. To the second drop, we're gonna add anti-B, and the third drop, we're gonna add our anti-RH, or anti-D there. So it'll make more sense as we start the experiment. So first, let's go to start with sample one. Okay, so I have sample one right here, and I'm gonna load up all the wells that fall under sample one. So one here, just a drop, a drop, and a drop, okay. So, Sample one is loaded up, and you can see the blood or blood analog is sitting in there. Now, to the first uh, number one, I'm gonna add anti-serum A. So this is essentially adding an antibody to it. So one drop is enough. And then to the B, I'm gonna add B. And to the RH, I'm gonna add the anti-RH or anti-D. Now at this point we need to mix our samples around. You can use toothpicks, and so I have some here, but if I do use toothpicks, I wanna make sure that I use a different toothpick for every sample in every well, because I don't want cross-contamination. I'm gonna do it without the toothpicks. I'm just gonna to try to agitate a little bit, going up and down and up and down, and seeing we're looking for clumping or agglutination. Okay, now let's take a look at our samples, what we can see here. It looks like I definitely have clumping or agglutination down here in the, in the B well. So in that case, we know that I have the B antigen in that blood because if the antigen and the antibody meet, then it causes agglutination. Okay, for A here, I don't think I have a reaction right now. We'll come back and look at that in a second. And it doesn't seem that I have a reaction on the RH factor. So right now, uh, it looks to me like this is gonna be a B negative blood, but we'll give it time to continue to react. Now let's load up the rest of our cells with the other three mystery samples. So this is sample two. Again, I'm gonna go one, two, three, that's sample two. And then sample three, same type of thing. And sample four. Okay, again, trying not to cross-contaminate anything. So sample two, three and four, I can go ahead and add my A. So A is gonna go across this way. Just make sure I'm doing this right, right? So sample two A, correct? So A antibody, sample three A, sample four A. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for my anti-B. One, two, three. And finally the sample D was the RH. Okay, and again, we're just gonna agitate those as much as possible without getting any cross-contamination by going into adjacent wells. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes of mixing, and now let's determine, if we can, what our blood types might be. So here for the first sample, we said that we had agglutination right here uh, on the B antibody. So that would indicate we have the B antigen. So in this case, it would be B blood, but is it positive or negative? Well, as it turns out, this fake uh, RH antigen doesn't work very well, and it's kind of gelled uh, uniformly across 
uh, except for in the third well. So we'll just call anything that gels positive, okay? So if we have B and we have uh, uh, gelling down here on RH, it would normally be agglutination, we would call that B positive blood. Okay, for sample number two, you can take a look and see where do you see agglutination, and you may not be able to see the gelling going on, but I'll just tell you that the RH down here has gelled, okay? So figure out what the sample is there. For sample three, take a look at where we see clumping or agglutination. Okay, so this is sample three right here. This is well A, well B, etc. Okay, so what does it look like? And sample uh, three doesn't have any clumping or agglutination uh, in the RH, so keep that in mind. And then sample four here, we have, uh, looks like no clumping in any of the first two wells. And we'll go ahead and, and just see what the fourth well looks like. Again, real blood doesn't gel like that. Uh, but we'll just say that the RH here, for sake of argument, is positive. So be able to figure out what that blood type is. And as part of this activity, you also have to tell me uh, who compatible donors would be uh, for uh, recipients that had this blood type.